Hello there, it's Andy Younes from FormerSurf once again. In this short how-to on IBMI video set, we'll be taking a look at how to use public key authentication on the IBMI. Public key authentication is a way of logging on to an SSH session using a cryptographic key rather than a password. Let me quickly show you what we're trying to achieve here. I've just had to replace my laptop where this kind of authentication was already set up. Let me show you this. If I start the command session and start a shell session using SSH and Andy at Galatea, our IBMI, you can see it automatically starts the session and logs me into my home directory without any passwords. This is what we are going to configure on my new desktop. How does this all work? It's all down to keys. We have a pair of keys, a private key and a public key. Each key pair is unique and the two keys work together. If you have the private key, you can prove you have it without showing what it is. It's like proving that you know a password without having to show somebody else the password itself. Public key authentication works like this. We generate a key pair, as we said, a private key and a public key. We then give the remote server our public key. We never give out our private key. It's called private for a reason. When we want to connect to the remote server, that server then asks us to prove you have the private key that corresponds to their public key. If the two match up, the remote server allows us to sign on. We don't have to worry about how it does this. The remote server and your client, the PC, will take care of it all for you. Next, we have to generate our SSH key pair. We generate the key pair on your laptop, not on your IBMI server. To create these keys, we need a program that will generate these for us. Got a couple of options there. You can use Open SSL feature for Windows, Git for Windows, or Putty. They all include a command called ssh-keygen that will generate a new key pair for us. I'm going to use Git for Windows in a Windows terminal session. I'll open up a git session for that, then type in ssh-keygen. It will tell us it's generating our key pair. You will be prompted to choose the location to store these keys. On Windows it places the keys in a hidden directory .ssh under your user directory. Taking the default location is good, so we just press enter. Next you will be asked to choose a password, passphrase, we can skip that. Our key pair now has been generated. There will be two different files, one for each of the key pair. I'll show you these in Windows Explorer. The one named id.rsa is your private key. Keep that one safe and don't dish it out. The one named id underscore rsa dot pub is your public key. This is the key that we have to place on our IBMI. Next we need to place the contents of this public key and place it in a file called authorised underscore keys in my home directories dot ssh directory. There are many ways to do this. You could use a shared Windows directory or you could use RDI. But I'm going to use Microsoft's Visual Studio Code, VS Code. I'll find my home directory, slash home, slash Andy. And then in the .ssh directory, I need to place the contents of my public key into the authorised underscore keys file. And I'll save that. If you don't already have a file called authorised underscore keys, just create it as a new file with that naming convention. It doesn't have any extension. I'll paste my details into this file and save it there. And that should be it. 
And now the acid test. Let's see if it works. Back to my git window. Type SSH and the at Galatea. Galatea is the name of our IBMI. And yes, it automatically signs into our box using the key pair. So we don't have to input any passwords. Job done. All hunky-dory as they say. Let me move on to some problem determination now and go over some of the problems you might have. Um, hopefully this will help. If your profile is not allowing you to sign on without using a password, we need to check permissions and ownership. Firstly, let's check the permissions on my home folder. So this is the folder which is specified on my user profile. Let me check that Andy is the owner of this. So I do ls minus ld and the name of the directory slash home slash Andy. And here we can see the owner being Andy, so that's all good. If it wasn't Andy, I would use the command chown Andy and the directory slash home slash Andy. While we are here, we need to ensure that the permissions are set to drwxr-sr-x. If they are not, we use the command chmod to 755 to the home directory and Andy once again. So that's my home directory changed. It's all looking good there. And we do exactly the same now on our SSH directory. So we check the owner, ls minus ld home andy dot ssh. And if that's incorrectly set, once again, we would use the chown command to change it. Exactly the same as we did before. And we can see the permissions here have to be drwx minus s minus minus minus. Again, if they're not correct, run the command ch mod 700 home andy dot ssh, our ssh directory. And lastly, we need to check the authorized keys file. What's the spelling of this one? It has to be with a Z and not with an S. As we did with the other two directories, we must make sure the owner is Andy and correct it if necessary using the church own Andy home Andy dot SSH authorized keys. If the authority is not minus RW, we run the command chmod 600 this time home Andy dot ssh authorized underscore keys i'll put all these commands on our github page where you can find the link in the description of this video whenever we get a call from our clients with ssh sign on problems they have always been a problem with authority and ownership so check these out before you go shouting to ibm might stop an egg on the face moment if you need any further details about Microsoft's Visual Studio Code or Windows Terminal, check out our other videos at learning.formalserve.co.uk or the articles we have written for Powwire, powwire.eu. I hope you find them useful. And that wraps up this quick video. Thank you for watching our How To on IBM I video set. I hope you found them useful. Keep checking our website, learning.formalserve.co.uk and our YouTube channel. We regularly add new ones. Stay safe and see you soon.